let's film my tibia. So, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Olivia. Today, we're talking about all the books I want to read in September. So, this TBR is kind of big, kind of broad, on purpose, because I'm a mood reader, if not anything, and I, I just know myself. I know that if I put books on a TBR, more than likely I will not read them, but if I put a lot of books on a TBR, I might read some of them. <laughs> so, follow my logic, let's look at some of these books. So the first one is one of my most anticipated reads of this year, and that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. Ha 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 I'm so excited for this. I honestly don't know anything about what it's about. I just got so emotional though flipping through this because it has the same chapter headers that Stalking Jack the Ripper had, and that was one of the first arcs that I ever got. One of my favorite series. The third and the last book are questionable, but I'm really excited to read this. I really like her writing style. I like the characters. I think that they're just fun. And this cover, everyone wants to talk trash about the font and what the cover looks like. I think that this cover is great. The only thing is old Jimmy could take his name off of it and then that would be fantastic because I don't know what he has to do with this book. Absolutely nothing. He didn't write it. He didn't make that cover. He didn't do anything. So I don't know why he's here, but unfortunately he is. But yeah, this is probably my number one. Actually, there are two books I'm really excited for. So let's talk about the next one because it's this one and then The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab. I'm so excited for this. So I have not officially read the synopsis, but just listening to other people summarize it and little snippets I've seen on Instagram, what I'm gathering is a girl makes a deal with is it the devil to basically be immortal or just live longer but everyone that she comes into contact with forgets her same victoria schaub is one of my favorite authors of all time i think it's safe to say and i'm just so excited to read the next book i haven't been let down by a single book that i've read of hers i i just ranging from ya to adult sci-fi to adult whatever vicious and vengeful is it's just all been so good so this one and kingdom of the wicked are my like top two that i want to read this month absolutely for sure and i cannot wait to get to them speaking of victoria schwab i'm officially stating i want to reread vicious this month i have read this i don't even know how many times but i really want to get to this and i want to finally reread vengeful because i've reread this i think this will be my fourth time but i've only read vengeful once i think maybe twice but i don't think so because i haven't tabbed it and painted the edges yet so that's one thing i really want to do but this book follows victor and eli they are two college students in one timeline and in the other timeline they are enemies they are basically trying in the college timeline to prove that EOs are a thing. That means extraordinary is basically people that have powers. Think dark X-Men. That's where we're at. If the timeline made sense, that's where we're at. The way this is told is just so good because it has flashbacks. It doesn't start in the present. It starts like 27 days before the present, 28 days earlier, nine. Well, that's not in order. <laughs> But it even goes up to like four minutes previously and it's just and it has the found family trope which is just so adorable and I just love it so much but it all starts honestly the past timeline is them trying to create themselves into EOs and then the present technically timeline is uh, old Victor breaking out of prison coming for Eli and I just loved it. And I cannot wait to reread it because it's one of the books that no matter how many times I reread it, I don't get tired of it. I have some favorites that I'll probably never reread, but I just really love them anyways. Or like Throne of Glass, I love that series, but I don't think I could reread it three times in one year. But this one, not only could I, I did. And maybe we're going for another one. <laughs> I mean, we definitely are. Then, keeping with the spooky 
Element. I'm gonna read Middle Game. I'm going to actually pick up the audiobook of this one because I've heard that it is really good. I haven't read the synopsis. I've been told to go in without knowing a whole lot, so I'm... I really like all of the work that they have done under Mira Grant. Into the Drowning Deep is one of my favorite books of all time. I love their series, The Wayward Children. So good. I even liked the zombie book that I read under Mira Grant named Feed. I thought that, that was really, I was a really fun zombie book and I liked the end because they were bold enough to do what a lot of authors don't do. But this, I don't know anything about it. I just know, I mean, V.E. Schwab has blurbed it. And so has Charlene Harris who wrote the True Blood series. So two of my favorite things. Well, the True Blood TV show is my favorite. The book, haven't read it, but I think I'm either gonna love it or I'm just gonna be like, oh, what is happening? But either way, it'll be a good time. Then I think this is probably the last light read on this TBR because go big or go home, you know? And that is You Should See Me in a Crown. I've been wanting to pick this up since it came out. It's about a girl who basically is just entering, I think, prom queen to get the scholarship that goes along with it. And along the way, she falls in love with one of the other contestants, which is just such an adorable premise. So I am very excited to read this. I don't read a whole lot of YA contemporary, but when I do, <laughs> it's typically because some of my favorite channels have recommended it, but also because I think it would be a good fit for my classroom, and I think that this one would be one of those. I think it's the right age group. I think it has representation that I I have them in my personal library in my room, but our school library does not, and I only can afford probably to buy one copy of each book for my library, so uh, the kids can't, you know, check out the same book at the same time because I don't have multiple copies. So having multiple books with that representation is kind of the goal here. So that's what it is with this one. I think that I will definitely probably be adding this to my to buy list for my classroom at whatever point I'm able to do that. But yeah, I'm excited for this one because everyone is saying that it's really, really cute. It's adorable. And someone described it as they were just smiling the whole time they were reading it, which I haven't found a YA contemporary that made me feel that way since I very first read To All the Boys I Loved Before, before the movie came out. I don't know why, but I don't like the actor that plays Peter. <laughs> nothing, nothing against him. Not how I pictured him. And not the biggest fan of the second movie. So that series is a little weird for me now, but maybe this, maybe this will be my new, the new place in my heart. Now, on a very different note, The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. So I'm picking this up because one of my favorite thriller channels, Gabby, no secret here, read it and talked all about it. But also one of my favorite planner Instagrams, she just read it and, or is currently reading it, one of the two. I think reading it very fast though. And she also read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. So I want to read both of them. I've read the prequel. Let me see where I'm at in this. Because I did start it. I'm literally on chapter one. I read the prequel. It was a lot. I don't know if I just hyped myself up because of how much everyone was saying like, oh my god, it's so intense. Be careful going into it. Really like, look out. It's going to be so much for you. And not just for me, but like for anybody saying that it was really, really, really intense. Um, I must have just really hyped it up to be some like incredibly out of this world because it's honestly reminded me the way it was all described a lot of a lot of the true crime podcasts that I listen to like the cases they cover have this same gruesomeness to them I will say Karen Slaughter's writing really gave me anxiety and I think that that was I think it was really well done writing and that's why I got anxious not for any other reason other than I was just really feeling what the characters were feeling as much as you can as a reader watching them go through what they went through because dear god it was terrifying but i'm excited to see what happens with this because based on what i don't want to say anything because i i think that if you're going to read this you should just go into the prequel and just read it like know nothing because that's what i did and it was all i had was the content warnings but that still did not really prepare me for what happened. And it was more what happened was just shocking. It wasn't really like, it didn't 
terrify me. The only part that terrified me was towards the end because it includes one of my biggest fears. My biggest fears in the world are water, like really deep ocean water, but I'm also really interested in it, which is why I liked Into the Drowning Deep, but also uh, being buried alive or being buried and people don't realize like, hey, I'm not dead or waking up in surgery. All of these things, all of them. Also getting stabbed with a needle in public. I don't listen, I got a list, okay? But yeah. And it has one of those, just one of them at the very end of this uh, prequel. And it freaks me out to no end. But it, then you flip to the next page and it says 28 years later. And I guess we're going to find out what happens 28 years later. And I don't love this, but I'm excited to see what happens, honestly. I feel like excited might not be the perfect word, but I'm very interested. Next up is another recommendation from Gabby because I'm turning into a Gabby Reads fan channel, didn't you know? And this is Clown in a Cornfield. Didn't read the synopsis. I know a girl moves out to a tiny farm town and I'm assuming there's a clown in a cornfield. Cornfields, super freaky. Clowns, even freakier. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Next up, I have Pet Cemetery. I started this one last year. I did not finish it, so I'm gonna restart it and finish it. And we are doing a read along of this in the Buddy Reads a Latte Discord, which you can join down below. All you do is click on the link and you're signed up. There is gonna be a channel for each each section of the book. It's gonna be broken up, like you have to read a certain amount of pages or chapters each week and then you but you can read at your own pace you can read as fast or slow as you want because the discord server has channels broken up for each section basically but i'm excited to read this i feel like i really do want to read some of the ones that i already own from king i just need motivation because most of them are huge this one's not a big one so i don't think that i'll have a huge issue with it but in october we're gonna be reading it <laughs> and I'm gonna need a lot of motivation for that. So, if you wanna join, the links will be down below for the Discord server. But yes, I'm excited for this. We're also going to do a watch along at the end of the month for the newest Pet Cemetery, which I wanted to watch anyways because it looks really creepy, but I have a feeling the book is gonna be better than that movie because that movie did not get good ratings. Then, actually I lied. I have two kind of lighter reads. I have Spells and Spice Latte, which is a coffee witch cozy mystery and just looks absolutely adorable. I don't know anything about it. I'm assuming this girl probably works in a coffee shop. She has a cat, she's a witch, and she's going to solve a mystery. And it's very short. And it'll be a light, fluffy read. And that is kind of what I need in midst of all these other <laughs> books I've decided are a good idea. And then the next one I have is a middle grade, but it's still a spooky one. And that is Small Spaces. All I know from this is it's blurred by R.L. Stein, who wrote Goosebumps, which was one of the first series I became obsessed with as a kid. And my friend Lexi really, really likes it and promotes it on her channel all the time. So I'm excited. I really like spooky middle grades. There's just something so fun about them. I think maybe my favorite Halloween reads are probably either straight up horror books or spooky middle grades. They just have... I feel like spooky middle grades really just encompass all the cozy feelings of fall that I love and I want more of them. Then I have Cemetery Boys. I've had this on my TBR for a while. I think it's finally time. I think this is the perfect TBR to put this onto and I'm just very excited to read this. I don't know a whole lot about it. I think that there is some witchcraft in here. I think there's some undead or raising the dead, something along those lines and it just it just seems good. It just seems really good. And from what I've seen of some people who've already read this say that it was a really good read. So I'm trying to read, again, like I said, more a YA that I can include into the classroom. And I think that this has a lot of re representation like across the board and would definitely be a good one. I just have to make sure <laughs> that there's no like cuss words or anything too intense in here that parents could actually argue probably shouldn't be on the shelves. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but at the school that I student taught at, it was a middle school. I was student teaching seventh grade and they had all of ACTAR on the shelves. And, and this school was just for seventh and eighth graders and they had that. And I was like, yeah, because the, the thing is I can't really, 
I probably wouldn't win a case of argument against cussing or sexual content, but I could win a case against diversity. So that's the goal with these books is to make my shelves more diverse, but I have to make sure they're not dropping F-bombs every other page because then that, um, you know, that probably shouldn't. That probably won't go well. Who knows? Next up, <laughs> this is supposed to be something I buddy read with Chelsea in August and then August hit and then it hit again and then it hit me again. So I'm putting it on September from Blood and Ash. I believe the sequel comes out September 1st, so let's see if I can read it all in one day, shall we? I've heard it's very bingeable, very good. I love Jennifer L. Armentrout's writing. I've read the first two or three of the Lux series, the one with aliens. We need more alien books, y'all. We really do. And I I read those so fast. They were so good. So if her fantasy is anything like this, I might actually blow through this. But it's a big, like, you could do some damage with this book. It's like 600 pages. And the pages are thick, too. Because I, this is not, I couldn't get it in hardback. So I think, it's not self-published. But it's, it's definitely something, something different that I'm used to off of Amazon. But... I'm excited for it. And the second cover, I'll just put it up for fun. It's so beautiful. So yeah, I mean, we gotta, we gotta do it. Then back to cornfields, because why not? I have burn our bodies down. I refuse to let wilder girls decide how I feel about Rory Powers <laughs> because the writing was really good. I just couldn't find the plot. So I'm hoping that this one is better and I don't DNF it. Let's just hope. I've heard that it has sapphic representation without a romance being the center point of the plot, which um, that makes me even more excited to read it. So very excited for this one. Then I have a, another sapphic book, but it is sci-fi and that is Seven Devils. I got this from the Illumicrate. This is my bookmark already in it because um, I can't help myself. I literally unboxed it and then started reading it but I'm gonna save it for September now. And it is such a beautiful edition. It's a space opera. That's all I know so far. Seems like from what I've read, two people that really hate each other are gonna have to work together, which we'd love to see it. We do. So I will definitely be updating on this one because I think this might be one of the first ones I pick up because after reading so many thrillers for Summerween, I am in such a sci-fi mood. And then finally, I have the Patreon buddy read for this one, this month, which is the Suicide House. This is a boarding school. I believe there's a murder that happens there or multiple murders. I'm not sure, but it says inside the walls of Indiana's elite Westmont preparatory, preparatory, prep, whatever, high school expectations run high and rules are strictly enforced. Something happens in the woods behind the school and that sounds amazing. So I'm excited for this one. This will be good. We'll talk about it in the wrap up. So yes, that's it. For September, let's see how this month of reading goes. I hope y'all's goes well. Hope you're having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night. Wherever you are, leave a, a cat. Let's just do a cat. I just love cats. A cat emoji at the bottom, if you want to. If you don't, don't. That's okay. But my battery's dying, so I have to go. Bye.